Dr. Coolidge, I understand that a good many years ago you became interested in the production of high-voltage cathode rays outside the generating tube. Yes, Dr. Martin. Uh, we did a considerable amount of work on that in 1926 and 27. The cathode rays were produced by a tube using a hot cathode, high voltage, and a large window area. Up to 350 kV were used on this tube, and the effects of the electrons in air were observed at a distance of as much as 40 centimeters from the window. What about the intensity at that distance from the window, Dr. Coolidge? Uh, it was so great that the severe biological effects were obtained by exposures as short as one-tenth of a second. Inflammation occurred on the ear of a rabbit immediately after exposure to the rays, and severe burns were often followed by necrosis and sloughing off of the exposed tissues. These effects were, of course, produced by the ionization which occurred when the high energy electrons collided with the irradiated material. Many other effects of these rays were observed and recorded by our group. And here, Dr. Martin, are some of the reprints of that work. During the past few years, renewed interest in the use of high-energy electron beams has been directed toward two fields. First, the field of sterilization, aimed at prolonging the storage of products such as foods and pharmaceuticals. Second, the field of chemistry, with the objective of producing useful chemical changes in materials. Much of the work in this field in our laboratory has been carried out by E.J. Lawton and W.D. Bellamy. In our work, the high-energy electron beam is produced by accelerating a stream of electrons within a vacuum tube enclosure to very high velocities by means of an electric field. The 800 kV experimental machine being used is a converted 1 million volt X-ray unit of the resonant transformer type. In this machine, the thick tungsten target, which would emit X-rays if bombarded with high-energy electrons, has been replaced by a thin metal window, which allows the electron beam to pass to the outside and to strike the material under study. The elimination of the conversion to X-rays greatly increases the efficiency of this machine and enables it to deliver about 140,000 ronchons per second. This radiation corresponds to about a million times the energy needed for an X-ray photograph of the chest. In contrast to X-rays, the high-energy electrons are not able to penetrate deeply into the exposed material. The peak of the delivered energy is only a millimeter or so below the surface of most biological materials. This penetration increases in proportion to the increased energy of the electrons. The effect of this large amount of ionization upon the growth of bacteria can be seen in this demonstration. The central area of the bacterial culture has been exposed to the electron beam, whereas the peripheral region has been protected from the beam. It is obvious that the beam has killed all the bacteria. This process is caused by ionization of sensitive areas within the bacterial cell. We can take advantage of this observation by irradiating the surface of products that we wish to sterilize. For this work, a conveyor has been constructed which carries the material through the beam. In this way, it is possible to expose a large amount of material. During the exposure, there is only a negligible increase in temperature a fact that is of great importance in the treatment of materials that break down at high temperatures. This method of sterilizing the surface can be applied to many pharmaceuticals, such as antibiotics, blood plasma, and other materials in ampules.
Sterilization of certain foods may produce some undesirable side effects, such as changes in taste or odor. We are currently working on methods of minimizing these effects. These side effects are not true of all foods, and there are a number of products whose taste and odor are unaffected by irradiation. These studies lead us to the effects of ionizing radiation upon protein catalysts, commonly called enzymes. To demonstrate this effect, we show the cut surface of an apple, which, when untreated, has developed a characteristic brown discoloration. However, when the surface has first been exposed to radiation, no discoloration occurs because the enzyme responsible for this change has been destroyed by the rays. Even more complicated changes in the living cell can be demonstrated by exposing plant seeds to the electron beam. We notice that following this treatment, there is a retardation of the growth of the plants, roughly in proportion to the dose delivered. The seeds pictured on the extreme right were exposed to one million Röntgens and failed to germinate completely. In another experiment, we have grown marigolds from irradiated seeds. Treatment with 5,000 Röntgens causes a few changes or mutations, as shown in the third row from the left. The number of mutations increases with a dose, which has been stepped up to 100,000 Röntgens administered to the row on the right. The interaction of high energy electrons with matter produces a variety of chemical effects. Among these are the polymerization of monomers, the modification of polymers by cross-linking, and the degradation or depolymerization of large molecules. In this laboratory, these chemical studies have been made by E.J. Lawton, J.V. Schmitz, and A.M. Beeky. To illustrate the ability of electrons to cause polymerization, a monomer will be polymerized in the form of a star. The monomer, in the small glass dish, is covered by a piece of sheet lead having a star-shaped opening. After irradiation with electrons, polymer is found only in the regions not shielded by the lead. The polymerization process can be visualized in terms of this model. The high energy electrons activate monomer units, which can then get together to form large molecules or polymers. When some polymers are exposed to high energy electrons, the large molecules can be tied together. Among other beneficial effects, this cross-linking prevents softening and flowing of the material at higher temperatures. The polyethylene bottle on the left has been irradiated. The bottle on the right has not. These time-lapse pictures show that the irradiated bottle retains its shape even at a temperature of 150 degrees centigrade. One of the ways in which cross-linking can occur is demonstrated by the models. Hydrogen atoms have been removed from the polymer molecule by the high-energy electrons, leaving reactive sites indicated in red. When these reactive sites collide, the molecules are tied together. Other polymers degrade or depolymerize when irradiated with high-energy electrons. The left side of this polymethyl methacrylate sheet has been exposed to 50 million Röntgens. The evolution of regenerated monomer and other gaseous degradation products has caused extensive damage. Our model polymer molecule is broken by a high energy electron into active fragments. These fragments lose monomer until the polymer is gone.
Well, Dr. Coolidge, it appears that considerable progress has been made in this field since you made your original contribution 25 years ago. Yes, Dr. Martin. These developments are indeed exciting, and I predict that further work will uncover many additional applications of the electron beams.